Hello friends, welcome again to Daily Moments of Inspiration. You know, we've been talking recently concerning the glory of God and the revealing of the glory of God. But now I would like to delve just a little bit deeper into the revelation of God's glory. You know, over in Isaiah, the prophet spoke concerning this, and he said that voice of one that crieth in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. You know that was concerning John the Baptist. We know that was a prophecy. And it concerned John when he was pointing the way. And he said, I am the voice of one that crieth in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. And he spoke concerning the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Messiah, which was to come into the world, the Savior that was to come into the world. And he, and he prepared for the way for the coming of the Lord. And then the scripture says, And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall, shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. And so he spoke concerning the glory of the Lord that was to be revealed. Now, we know that the glory of God could only be revealed when the Christ or the Messiah was to come. Because before that, it's absolutely impossible. It must come through the revelation or through the appearing of the Messiah, the Christ, the Son of God, the Savior of the world. And so he prepared the way and he baptized our Lord Jesus Christ in the river of Jordan. And the Bible speaks about how that while he was baptized, baptizing him, John looked up and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, This is he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And he says, This is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And then he spoke and he says, Now I must decrease, but he must increase. And then shortly after that, we know how that John the Baptist was beheaded because his ministry, his calling in God was then fulfilled. He had pointed to the coming of the Christ. Now, the glory of God began to be revealed. When Jesus began to walk by the Sea of Galilee and to heal the sick and cast out devils and to work miracles and to multiply the bread and to walk on water and to do the things that he did, the glory of God was being revealed. But friend, it was to be more revealed than that, for the Bible speaks about how that after his resurrection, then the Holy Spirit descended upon the awaiting disciples. And when it came upon upon them, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, spoke the Word of God with boldness, and the glory of God was revealed on the inside of them. But friends, that was coming. If you see what it was, it was a coming of the Spirit of God. It was a coming of the Spirit of Christ, the Kingdom of God coming within. Now, look what the Bible speaks about over in Romans. Paul said, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, now having received the Spirit of God by faith in Jesus Christ, having called upon Him and believed in Him to take away our sins and to give unto us the Spirit of Jesus Christ, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And the Bible says, you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if we're children, then we're heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with Him, that we may be also glorified together. Now you see, our Lord Jesus Christ, when He went to Calvary, when He was betrayed by Judas, and, and when He was taken to Calvary, when He was nailed to that cruel cross of Calvary, that was the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. But friends, three days later, the glorification came. Because He left that body hanging upon the cross but three days later friend he arose from the dead to be glorified and it was a glorious beautiful body that, that, that knows no bounds it could pass through walls a beautiful glorified body and he says flesh he says a spirit hath not flesh and blood as you are flesh and bone pardon me as you see me have and 
The Bible says that they reached out and they touched him because he had a body. But that body was a glorious body. It was a glorified body. It was a resurrected body. It was a body that knew no limits. And then the Bible says, if we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ, then that which he received upon his resurrection, we also will receive, and we shall also be glorified together with him. Now, he says this, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed. For there is a glory that is to be revealed for the children of God. It says that the earnest expectation of the creature, that is the body, that is the man, it waits for the manifestation of the sons of God. That is to say that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, which dwells inside of us, inside of the sons of God, is to be revealed in the outward man. It says, because a creature itself shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. That is to say, as Jesus came forth in a glorification on the day of his resurrection, friends, we also will come forth forth in a glorification. Now how could this be? How could this happen? How could we come forth in a glorification? It can be only the glorification of the Son of God which is within us. For we know that inside of us the Son of God is glorified. The kingdom of God is glorious within. But that glory which is within the Son of God will be manifested. And the scripture says this, the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit or to know or to comprehend the redemption of our body. And so what is this manifestation of the sons of God? What is this glorification? It is the redemption of our body because God is concerned about our body. Just as the body of the Lord Jesus Christ came forth out of the grave after his resurrection, and was glorified friends also God has a glorified body prepared for us but that kingdom comes from within and the scripture says we know that all things work together for good to them that love God to those who are called according to his purpose for whom that God did foreknow he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren and moreover whom he did predestinate then he also called and whom he called then he also justified and whom he justified them he also glorified I like to hear that friends because we were before the foundation of the world we were known of God we were foreknown of God God knew us friends before we were ever born before we ever came into the world and we were in the mind of God and he saw us as perfected sons of God Hallelujah. In his likeness and in his image. And then, being in the foreknowledge of God, then whom he did foreknow, then he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son. That is, in every way, just like unto Jesus Christ, like unto his image. It says, and whom he did predestinate, then he also called. Were you in the foreknowledge of God? Did God know you before you ever came into this world? Then, friend, if he did, then you were predestinated, hallelujah, to be conformed to his image. And if you were predestinated then you're also justified you were also justified and if you were justified then you shall also be glorified hallelujah now on the inside we are glorified already for that glorification is taking place on the inside but that glorification on the inside of that kingdom within is going to be manifested in the outward body which is called the redemption of the body the redemption of the purchased possession the glorification that's what we look for. That's the manifestation of the sons of God. Now, Peter the apostle said this. It says, Beloved, it says, Rejoice that when his glory shall be revealed, that is, when the glory of Jesus Christ shall be revealed, you also may be glad with exceeding joy. For if you be reproached for the name of Christ, you're happy. For the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. And the Bible says he is glorified. Friends, when Jesus Christ is glorified, he will be glorified from within his saints and glorified on the outward body. Listen to this. 
Peter said this, I am a partaker of the glory which shall be revealed. And he says, according as his divine power hath given unto us, children of God, all things that pertain unto life and godliness. When he resurrected from the dead, he promised us and he gave us all things that pertain unto life, all things that pertain unto eternal life, all things that pertain unto real life, and all things that pertain unto godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature. You are called unto glory. You are called unto virtue. That glory which is on the inside, which is Jesus Christ, the kingdom of God within, it will be manifest in that outward body, which is a manifestation of the sons of God. And then all the world shall come, and they shall bow down at your feet, and know that I have loved you, Jesus said. Hallelujah. Oh, to be a son of God, manifested in his image.